So good afternoon. My name is Daisy and I work for Getting On Board and you're here today uh, to talk about all things artificial intelligence, which I hope that you are um, expecting and looking forward to. So just before I hand over to Ian to talk to us about um, kind of to lead the session, I just wanted to give you a quick welcome and a quick bit of housekeeping. So this session is part of our trustee learning programme and it's um, a year long programme, the trustee learning programme is of free sessions that cover loads of different issues all around trusteeship and governance. Um, so you're very welcome here today and we'd love to see you at future sessions as well. And I'll be sharing the information for you to be able to know what's coming up as well. Just a bit of housekeeping from me. The session will be recorded. I've just started that recording. The Zoom lady has told us that she started um, and you'll receive a link to watch the recording and any slides that are used as well. So um, please use this session as is useful for you so if you want to make notes if you want to use the chat absolutely but don't feel like you need to because you are going to get the recording and the slides as well could i ask you to stay muted on the call um it just makes it, it much clearer for people to hear ian who will be talking um if we want you to participate we'll we'll ask you and make that obvious i do also have the power to mute you so i i'm not afraid to use it and i i will mute you if you come off mute <laughs> um I can just see that a couple of people have actually enabled closed captions. So I wanted to let you know that they're available for you. So if you need them or find them useful, um, you can enable those. You need to do that. Um, and if you have any trouble doing it, just drop us a message and we can help. This is a generic message that we have that our sessions are tailored around um, the Charity Commission and the English and Welsh laws. So if you're joining us from Scotland and Northern Ireland, you are very welcome. Lots of the principles apply. And I think in, that ses in this session, that's very relevant. Um, but I just we kind of just wanted to acknowledge the differences perhaps between the nations and how legislation might impact. Um, we'd really love you to use the chat. Please ask questions and share experiences. We'd really love to hear from you. But if I could ask you to make sure that your comments are as accurate as possible, if you're given advice and that they're respectful as well. And equally, sometimes people find the chat quite overwhelming. So if you kind of think and actually really just want to concentrate on what Ian's saying, just shut the chat and just soak up what Ian's talking about. That's absolutely fine as well. And the last thing from me is that um, the reason why this trustee learning programme and this session is free is because we've got some really supportive sponsors. So Russell Cook um, have sponsored this session and that means that um, it's free for us all to take part. And so we just wanted to thank them for that. So I'm going to stop talking and I'm going to hand over Ian uh, to Ian to run the session properly. OK. Right. Good morning. Uh, I'm Ian. If you haven't met me before, I'm the one, the mad bloke with the bunnies. People do ask about AI bunnies. This is Minnie Ding, who's not happy. We went to the vet yesterday uh, and we got stuff shoved down our throat and in our ears. Uh, and then she stuck a needle in his bum and then he kicked the vet. Uh, and we haven't quite recovered yet. But people do ask about the bunnies. So uh, they do like to do the odd webinar. So I'm going to talk about AI. I'm going to rant about it at you for about 40 minutes. You don't need to know anything about AI. You do not need to take any notes or anything like that. If you go to the website, Charity Excellence, the AI services page has everything, videos, training, chat libraries, everything you could possibly need. So I am Charity Excellence. Our stepping stone strategy is about acting as a catalyst to support the sector in adopting AI as quickly and safely as possible. We don't want to run it. Um, I mean, a vast number of instantaneous experts have leapt up and suddenly appearing. They're not all saying things that I would entirely agree with. Uh, we launched our first AI service on Christmas Day 2022, a few weeks after ChatGPT, several since we've done loads of stuff. We actually build the damn stuff. And I've been a volunteer for about 45 years. So we vaguely know what we're talking about. So I will kick off. This is us. So what is the big deal about AI? Well, I'm Charity Excellence. In the coming year, even if our rate of growth stops right now, we will support 50,000 individuals. Uh, the bunnies can actually support up to 120 a minute, 24 seven. We've got 40,000 charities. Well, we don't, we got bored counting last year, so we don't count anymore. Uh, we're not sure how many we've got. They're growing at about three and a half thousand a month. 
and our charities support 10 million beneficiaries. That's 15% of the UK population. And everything is done by me, two bunny rabbits, and a 30K budget. And the 30K budget is twice as big as it was last year. That is what you can do with AI. And what we want to see is everybody getting the most out of it. So what is it? Fundamentally, it's the ability of a computer to learn and think. So I teach the bunny rabbits and then they can speak to you. So if you turn up and go, uh, I'm queer and I'm being abused, they'll go, ah, I got you. You're a member of the LGBTIQ plus community. I need to send you to Gallup. I'm gay and I'm about to be made homeless. That will be stolen all housing. I'm about to be made homeless. That will be crisis. Uh, my boyfriend's abusing me. That will be rape crisis. Uh, my wife's abusing me. We've got one for that. And I can't remember what their name is. And a man online wants me to take my clothes off. You're a child and send you to Childline. Yes, we do get that stuff. Some of the stuff we get is pretty bloody grim. But they can talk to you like that and they can engage with people and it makes them a lot more accessible. So they can do things that are generally done by people. They do get anthropomorphized. AI is a tool. It is not sentient. It is not racist or misogynist or anything. It's a bunch of algorithms. Do not lose sight of that. And there are lots of different types. And what I'm going to do is explain it to you. So fundamentally, the challenge is you've got two choices. You can jump on the bandwagon by adopting AI, and it might go horribly wrong because there are lots of risks. Or you don't jump on and then you miss out on a game-changing technology that's going to change the world faster and by far more uh, than the internet. Damned if you do and damned if you don't. Our job is to make sure you're not damned at all. Our aim is to make this accessible to everyone. And in particular, we are always focused on small charities and marginalised groups. Women's groups, International Women's Day tomorrow, LGBTI, BAME, dis disabled people, food banks, they're the people that really matter to us. So what are the current and near-term risks? Privacy. Uh, they are scraping all the websites. There's not a lot you can do about it, but we've got some stuff we can give you. And they want data. It's really, really data hungry. That's what they all want. So when you go into chat GPT, unless you've opted out, you are sharing everything with its data set. I never put any sensitive personal or financial information into one of these. Just don't. Legal issues. Who owns it and how can it be used? So I have uh, just, what have I written things on? I wrote, I wrote something on Google Ads. Uh, ChatGPT scrapes it. Uh, NCV will log in and say, I want you to write me something on Google Ads. So ChatGPT takes my work. I own it. It's my copyright. And it changes it and it gives it to NCVO. NCVO then change it and quite possibly make it better than mine. And then they publish it on their website. So who owns it? I own the original. Does ChatGPT own the other one? And does NCVO own what they've published on the website? Or are they in breach of copyright? Now, I don't care if NCVO do that because I just want people to have it. But you can see how this is going to cause real problems. And there are ethical issues if you're in the areas like arts and things. So if you have an AI generated image in the style of Banksy, is that legal or not? Possibly, possibly not. Uh, but more for you. Is that ethical? Should you be doing it? Disinformation. This is going to be a very, very big deal. Charities rely on public trust. We need people to trust us. The problem with this damn stuff is, is you can do what you like. So Andrew T and all the likes of him, generally what they come out with is pretty bloody awful, but obviously so, usually. You can put this stuff into AI and say, all this stuff about women, I want you to rewrite this in a way that is really compelling for teenage boys. And it will. There are guardrails, there are also jailbreaks to get around them. Um, but what will happen is the disinformation you've seen in the past, there'll be a lot more of it because you can do it really quick and it will be much more convincing. Ditto scams. 
generally you can pick them up. They're getting really clever. Somebody in Hong Kong two weeks ago had an online video meeting, just like this one, with chief executive, executive, CFO, all the, he knew them all, he knew their voices, they had a whole meeting and they decided to transfer 25 million quid to another bank account. He was the only human being on the call. Everything else was AI generated and being run by scammers. Cost them 25 million quid. Think about your charity, but also think about your beneficiaries. What about vulnerable older people, vulnerable younger people? There's going to be a lot more. It's going to be a lot more convincing. And discrimination. Not by the software. So uh, you, we're rolling out across the criminal justice system all this uh, uh, recognition soft, facial recognition software. It is known to be problematic <clears throat> uh, because when they trained it, it isn't very good with black people. The reason it's not very good with black people is we have a huge data set of photographs of white people. It's really good at recognizing them. They didn't have many black people. It's basically not very good at recognizing black people because it just didn't get enough practice. That's it. If you're using it in criminal justice, that poor guy who's just been slammed up against the wall as having been identified as this person, suddenly you've got real issues. Uh, another one for women, uh, they said to the system, we would like you to do interviews and stuff, and it's happening right now, trust me, uh, and we want you to bring forward for interview the people who will be really successful in the company, and it stopped inviting any women. And the reason it did that is because you lot were no bloody good in that company. And the reason you weren't is because to get on in that company, you had to be a young, thrusting white bloke with an MBA. The problem wasn't the software, the problem was the company culture. So you can see how these get embedded. Now, the thing about women, that's not such a big deal because it's screamingly obviously wrong. It's the kind of thing you pick up really quickly. What happens if it only did it to some women or only intermittently or only increased your insurance rates by a little bit that you can't notice it? Those are the kind of risks. It's the boring, mundane stuff that's going to do us in. So longer term, um, if you're a really sad man like me and you follow people like Cambridge Futurists and the MIT Robotics people, they're talking about things. Obsolescence. I give you an idea of what that looks like. You can see how we use AI. Uh, an example for you is I've simply walked around all of you, took your phones off, you switched the Wi-Fi off, took your laptop away, I gave you a paper diary, a little ring binder and a biro and sent you back to work. That is what it will be like in a year or two if you're not using AI. It will be, and it's going to be very fast and very fundamental. So if you don't understand how you're going to do this, you're going to lose out. Loss of human agency, Amazon, where you can have a three minute pee break and you will do this. We've already got HR monitoring software for remote workers uh, and we can see everything that you're doing and you will do what we tell you exactly as we tell you. That robs you of decision making that is really, really damaging for people. I don't see this as an issue for charities because we're not like that. But what happens if this begins to spread more widely? What's that going to do to people's mental health? How will this kind of things impact the kind of things that charities will be looking at? Dumbing down creativity. There are content farms springing up already. Google's trying to move to put a stop to it. This is why the human beings will not disappear for the fundraisers. It doesn't have flair, insight. It doesn't have that kind of stuff. It's going out into its LLM, finding all this data and giving you an average and a return. And if you take the average of the average, you get very average. This is a threat to things like incisive journalism, artistic creativity, model outsourcing, all these young people sort of slashing themselves and self-harming on Facebook. It's absolutely terrible. It's really sad. What model outsourcing says, if you built a car and the car crashes and it hurts someone, it's your fault. You built it. What it also says about this kind of thing is, if you build AI or a Facebook system or whatever, if you've built it, it is your responsibility to make sure that it's run safely. You are accountable for that. This is a key issue. 
the AI, uh, the, the, the EU's kind of gone down that route. Uh, the British government is talking about an innovation friendly approach, lack of regulation. We it would be very damaging if we suddenly go, actually, that's all right. So all this facial recognition software, it's we're rolling out all over the place, and suddenly we find it's discriminated against um, ethnic minority people in about five years' time, and we get round to the usual lessons have been learned. We're terribly sorry. You got banged up in jail for 10 years and you shouldn't have. Uh, actually, what we should be saying to people like the police and the security services, I'm a veteran. I have no problem with these guys, but you're going to do it. It must be done properly responsibility is yours. I don't see that happening anywhere. Uh, critical thinking. Um, this is all a bit fluffy stuff. Uh, if you say to Alexa, what's the weather like going to be in Aylesbury this afternoon? I have to go up to London to do a presentation on an AI panel. Uh, and I want to know if I need to wear a coat. Can you give me the idea? I'm asking Alexa for information. If I say, Alexa, should I take an umbrella with me this afternoon? I have asked Alexa to make a decision for me. I have stepped over a line. It is a very, very big line. Critical thinking is fundamental to being a human being. When you go to Tesco's today, are you going to have the curry or are you going to have the pasta? Critical thinking. How are we going to land the aeroplane? What should we do in this operation? Oh gosh, should I press the nuclear button or not? That is all critical thinking. It is vital to humans. We must retain that. You cannot say to Alexa, should I take an umbrella? We need to retain that. So this is fluffy stuff. This is the kind of stuff that's coming out of MIT. It's not the kind of stuff you read in the sector press. I think these are bigger threats. Uh, and the paperclip maximizer was a thought experiment from, I think about 2003. You say to the paperclip maximizer, I want you to make as many paperclips as possible. That's great. And it begins to fill the world up with paperclips. Uh, and then the paperclip maximizer realizes that the humans are not going to want the planet full of paperclips. So the best thing to do is get rid of the problem. And that's the thought experiment. This is the whole thing around artificial general intelligence. So where do you get with that? I train the bunnies. It takes me a long time. They come and tell me and say, I've got some ideas. And they go, no, yes, no, yes, no. Or they come and say to me, I can't answer this question. I say, well, here's an answer to the question. And the bunnies learn and get more and more, more clever. They can answer about 91%. What if they could train themselves? They could do it in milliseconds. It takes me hours. Then they get much smarter. And then you get into an exponential curve until you reach singularity when the uh, AI is actually smarter than we are. It is not human. And this is what they call goal divergence. I can talk about this all day. I am awful. But the gist of it, this is give you an example. We all think climate change is really, really worrying and it needs to be sorted out. So we say to AI, Skynet, or whatever you want to call it, fix the climate change. And it goes, yeah, sure, you're the problem. And then it fixes the problem. We might not like that. That is it. Real? Yeah, it potentially could. It's not happening in the near future. They all want to shout about it because they don't want you to think about black people getting banged up in jail or women having higher insurance things because that's mundane. That will delay things that will get in the way of profit. Much more interesting to talk about this. So I put it on the table, but don't worry about it. And the AI bunnies have got your back. This is Mini Ding. Did Mini Ding really sit on a motorbike for a shotgun and a pair of cool sunglasses? No, he didn't. This is Mid Journey. It is an AI generation system. Uh, it's quite slick. You can see how good this stuff is. So, sorry, my wife just came in. Yeah. Right. So, what is generative AI? ChatGPT is the one everybody knows. There are lots of different types. So, for example, uh, neural networks been around since the 1950s. Machine learning, the bunnies use uh, robotics. Um, generative AI is different. Generative AI creates things. ChatGPT launched November 22. As I said, we launched uh, the month after Christmas Day. So it's a new kind of AI, but it's not the only kind. So traditional computer processes do this, then that. 
So if you log into Charity Excellence, it can generate trillions of frameworks, completely different. It responds to your input and it builds what you need absolutely around you. But what it's doing is it's not AI. It just looks like it. So if you say, I'm a veterans charity, the algorithms say, go and get the veterans charity questions. We're more than three millions. Algorithms say, go and get the veterans charity questions for organizations of more than three million. Take the veterans charity questions of more than three million and insert this question into the operations questionnaire number 12, that question into the strategy questionnaire number three. Absolutely mechanical. That's how computer systems work. Generative AI just looks for patterns and it's black box stuff. It just does this. And that's why it's so complicated. So it's quite, quite, quite different to, to what normal computers do. So I have three things for you to get. If you get these three things, you understand everything about AI. Large language models. They have data sets that are absolutely enormous. Think internet. But they're global, so they're not UK data sets. They're not charity data sets. They're huge, huge data sets. They've got everything out there. Strategy templates, arguments for legal positions, what could have happened with They've got all that stuff. Huge, huge amounts of information to play with. What it actually is, is a glorified version of autocomplete on your phone. That is what ChatGPT is doing. So if I go into it and say, would you give me 12 fundraising ideas? It'll go, what do I autocomplete? Well, it'd be number one, wouldn't it? And then it goes to its LLM and goes, uh, oh, there's a fundraising idea, right, it's a fundraising idea. What would I do next? Oh, I'd write down number two. What would I do when I've done that? Oh yeah, I go and get another fundraising idea. It goes and get another fundraising idea and it writes it down. That is all it's doing on steroids. So a bunch of professors, the Charity Commission refused their charity registration on human rights grounds uh, because they were bloody left wing types, you know, dreadful people. Um, and they were all talking about queer theory and Black Lives Matter and critical race theory and stuff like that. And the Charity Commission said, you have not demonstrated a causal link between those left wing theories and the Universal Declaration of Human Rights is underpinning articles and supporting conventions. That is the legal requirement to be a human rights charity. Go away. So they came to me. I went to chat GPT and said, critical race theory, Black Lives Matter. I don't know anything about them. I want you to map them to, and I would like you to give me that in 300 words and prove all the causal links. It took about 30 seconds. Charity's now registered. Charity Commission is really hacked off, um, but that's what it can do. Can you see the power? Now, the bit I need you to take from this is not only how powerful it is, but everything it used was part of its data set. It had all that information. However, it doesn't know anything about you, what you plan or who you are or what you do. So when you talk to things like ChatGPT, these are the three things you need to know. And if you know that, you're sorted. So what's the challenge? Uh, ONS figures suggest that 50 people have tried it. Uh, and frankly, it's coming in everything in everything, Excel, Word, the whole lot. So whether you want to use it or not, or whether you even know you're using it or not, you will be using it. And the people in your charity are almost certainly using it now. There is no opt out on this. And it's black boxes. What I said about patterns, can you imagine a data set that big with patterns and it sort of looks at them? Uh, and to give you an idea about that, I was training the bunnies of a Saturday morning uh, and they threw a hissy fit. And they were saying things like one out of 10 would not recommend made my fuss stand on end. And it was this woman's name. And I'm like, what's that about? So I Googled it. It was the actor who boiled the bunny rabbit in Fatal Attraction. And I went to the devs and I said, well, I built the knowledge banks and I trained them. I had no idea who this woman was. How do they know? And he went, no idea, mate. They just do that thing. Nobody knows. 
what's going on in those black boxes is just too complicated. So the world is rapidly and fundamentally changing. And we don't even know the way it's changing. They're pouring billions into this. It's going to be massive. And we just don't know what it'll be doing next year. It's far ahead of the ethics. It's far ahead of the legal. It's far ahead of the regulation. But it's here now. So you do need to update your policies and procedures. You just have to roll with it. In Charity Excellence, I have written 40 for anyone that wants them. If you download them, they are all AI ready. So you can just download them, it'll do that for you. So what do we get? It can be vague. So if you go into it and say, I want you to write me a funding bid, it will. It will probably be a US company and it will probably be very short because you haven't given it any information, but it'll write it for you. And this is what a lot of people give up. You have to be really specific. So what's young people? You're all young people to me. I mean, I'm so old, you're all young people. But what you could have is primary school children in a madrasa in Pakistan, UK undergraduates. How you would talk to them and the answers you would get on them could be very, 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 very different. You have to be absolutely precise with the thing. Hallucinations, it invents stuff. But what I said about autocomplete, so if I go into my bid writing bunny and I don't give it the information and I say to it, I want you to write me a bid anyway, it will because it's autocompleting, it's trying to help me. And the last time I did a demo, it came up as a women's charity working in mental health. That's hallucination. I wasn't told that, it's completely untrue. But it knew it had to say what kind of charity it was and I hadn't told it. So it did the best it could. It knew it had to tell me the best funding bid had to include what the charity did. So it did its best. It wasn't making mistakes, it was me. I didn't tell it about my charity and gave it the information it needed. It's not up to date. It soon will be. They, 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 these will run in real time, but not at the moment. It's currently running about 2022. So if you say, could you give me an assessment of the budget yesterday? The answer is no, it can't. Uh, mistakes. It just makes mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes. So proofread it. Treat it as a draft. So be precise and treat everything as a draft. And you will not go far wrong. This is how you approach it. So what can't it do? Funding bids. People do try. But the vast bulk of a funding bid is about you. It doesn't know that stuff. So if you're a skilled bid writer and you know how to use ChatGPT, you can drop into ChatGPT and it'll write bids. It's fine. If you can't write English well, or if you don't know what should be in a fundraising bid, or you don't know how to you struggle. So what you do is you go to the AI bid writing bunny inside Charity Excellence, and you have a chat with the bunny. And the bunny will take everything you've got, write a prompt around it, pop off to chat GPT and get it to write your funding bid. But the key here is it's all the information about you. Policies, it will write your policy. It tends to be a bit Janet and John, and it often doesn't really get it. The things like safeguarding, uh, I've tried pointing it at things like the Charity Commission. Uh, the Charity Commission website is such a mess that it, it really struggles. I don't use it for policies at all. So I have written 40. You can download them from Charity Excellence. Everything's free. Uh, that's how we do it. Uh, it is not up to date yet. So if you want the latest grants, it's not got them. If you want to do a pestle, if you want prices, it doesn't have that kind of stuff. Privacy issues. I just do not share it. Now, you could do it for a beneficiary. You could put beneficiary A has had this, 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 and you could do that you, 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 data protection wise, but no sensitive personal information. I just don't. Uh, fundraising research, it's got guardrails for the likes of the Tates in the world uh, and it stops you. So when I go in and say to it, give me all the companies and bucks that donate to charity, it goes, I'm happy with that. And I go, well, I want to know who the chief exec is and have you got his email or her email and telephone number? And it goes, no, I'm sorry, I can't do that. Same with celebrities. But if I go in and say, give me all the charities, can you tell me what they've actually done from the website? Uh, and could you give me the website address and the company email and telephone number? It's perfectly happy with that. 
If you then go back into it and say, um, could you tell me how to get the chief executive's phone number and emails and all the rest of it, it'll tell you how to do it. It won't do it for you, but it'll tell you how to do it. So there are things you can do. So be aware about those. So it is the biggest opportunity in decades. What is AI going to do? AI is not going to replace human beings. It's not. And I don't see it creating significant job losses either. Certainly not in the charity sector. It does two things. It removes digital debt. It frees you up to do more of the great work that you want to do. In a sector that's massively overstretched, would you like to use lose a bunch of workload is kind of really interesting. And it augments capabilities. It enables you to do far more than you could do yourself. So augmenting capabilities is the example of me. I am not an expert on queer theory or the Human Rights Act. I didn't need to be. It let me do things that I couldn't. And removing digital debt, give you an example. You have a mental health report written by clinicians. Uh, and so I say to ChatGPT, I would like you to write a board paper of 500 words. I want it to be authoritative, but I want it to be in plain, simple English without any clinical terms. Thank you. I'd like you to do me a web page. I'd like you to do me a bit for my newsletter. I would like you to do some uh, tweets for me. No, wait a minute. We work with young people. Can you tell me what systems young people are on? Those are the, thank you very much. What days and times do they post most frequently? That's excellent. Now that I've got that, could you give me my Snapchat posts? And I particularly want to do this, this and this, but not that, that and that. Done. Just like that. So we can get rid of all the people. No, because when you look at your posts, you go, no, that, that just won't get traction with our people. The young people just won't buy that one because you know it's wrong. And I'll give you an example of that. I was doing an example for uh, fundraising for a women's group. And it thought that all the ladies should bake some nice cakes for everyone. And I thought, I mean, I'm not very good at this kind of thing, but that did sound to me tad tam, uh, patronising, didn't get the biscuit. It cannot take the context. So what it said was fine. Having a bake sale is a fundraising idea. But phrasing, like, phrasing it like that in the social society that we live in for a women's refuge who's been abused, no, that does not work but it just doesn't get the context. It can't get that kind of thing. It hasn't got flair. It can give you endless fundraising ideas. It cannot tell you what the next big fundraising idea will be because that can only come from a human. And so we use it to deepen our relationship with technology, but it is a tool in exactly the same way your laptop is. It is not going to be running the world. So how can it help? Blank page problem. Penny decides she's going to have a governance festival in London, hands it over to Daisy, who goes, oh my God, I've never done that before in my life. You go into chat GPT and say, I have been told to have a governance festival in London. Can you give me a step-by-step -step guide of how I could go about it? It's brilliant for that stuff. Creating things. So it's going to be this, this, and this. Could you give me a plan for my governance festival? Could you give me a draft press release for my governance festival? Any of that. Review and compare. So I've written a paper for the board. I didn't get ChatGPT. I can put it in and I can say to ChatGPT, would you please rewrite this better? Or could you rewrite it with 20% less words? Or comparison. So the first one I did was for a black group. A lady came up at the end and said, I've been told to get a social media management system. I don't know anything about it. How do I do that? And I said, sit down. Please give me a list of all the social media management systems that would be appropriate for a small UK charity, including the ones that are free. I would like you to contrast and compare them, give the advantages and disadvantages of each and recommend the best one for the charity. 30 seconds. So for that kind of thing, it's really, it won't make the decision for you but it can take a lot of the spade work out. Summarise. So take this big report. I want you to turn that into a board, board paper, a web page, whatever. Uh, and having fun and spotting your creativity. Uh, I went to Germany. I've got a wonderful niece called Sophie. Uh, she wanted to meet the bunny rabbits. 
Uh, so she says, what do I do? I said, we just introduce yourself. She said, I'm Sophie. And the bunny rabbit went, V8 Sophie Kitchen. And she said, the bunny rabbit's speaking German. And I went, it would appear to be. And she said, how does it speak German? How does it know my name's Kitching? I said, well, ask it. And she said, how do you know my name's Kitching? And the bunny rabbit said, well, your dad was worried you weren't doing your schoolwork. So I took over a military intelligence satellite form so he could track you and make sure you're doing all your schoolwork properly. Incandescent German teenager. Apparently, I used to be her favorite uncle. But you can have fun with this stuff. So these are the things um, we've created. It's a governance framework, policies. All of the tools that I've created are designed to be pick and mix. You can't create tools that work for everyone. So what you do is you go in, you take the stuff you want, you bend the rest. So if you're a big charity, you might copy my entire framework and just adjust it. If you're a tiny little charity, you might go in and say, well, we just need to tweak our data protection policy and we need to do a bit like this and you just take from it. So that's, so I have a risk register, the risks I talked you through, you want that in far more detail, cybersecurity toolkit. Basically, it's just good cybersecurity that you really need, but you just need to make sure that people get this stuff. So I've created a little toolkit. You can just pick it up and use it. Um, if you're commissioning it or you're funding it or they're trying to sell it to you, the design principles will tell you all the questions you should ask about a AI system being brought in. Data protection toolkit, you want to be really careful. You plug this in. I was on a, a briefing last week and the local authority guy was telling me all about they're going to plug AI into the side of a gigantic data set they owned and how clever they were. And I pointed a few questions he might want to think about and he left a very worried man. Data protection, how cleans the data, all that kind of stuff. We've done insight briefings, training webinars. My roadkill toolkit, uh, is your charity going to get killed? AI will not take your job. Someone using AI might. Uh, charities will have to adapt. And the roadkill toolkit, I've got a very sad sense of humor. We'll give you all the questions you need to ask. It will give you all the steps to take. It will talk about how you change organizational culture. You just help yourself. And the stepping stone strategy is the AI services page. That is access to absolutely everything we do. Um, what do we do? These are the bunnies. Why have I got bunnies? The answer is I've got very vulnerable people. I needed two avatars. I was looking around the room for inspiration. The pair of them were fast asleep on the floor. That's why we've got bunny rabbits. They will help you navigate the whole system. They will tell you where to go and get funding or help or resources. They provide welfare support to anyone. Uh, absolutely anyone of any kind. You just go in and you talk to them and they will help you. Uh, they can answer 20,000 questions. If you're planning your events in Scotland uh, and you want to know when the public holidays in 2025 are, the bunny will go and get the link for you. PAYE is fine. Questions like, uh, how do I give money to a charity? I clearly don't want that to not get answered, so the bunnies will answer that for you. Chat GPT services, we will, the bunnies will write funding bids for you, the insistent one. We have oven ready Chat GPT. There's a Chat GPT launch pad, it will come on. You can either talk to the bunny in system and it will do it for you, or you can go in and follow the guide, or you can use the library or the pick and mix and it will take you all the way through. And there's a video that explains it all. And it does popular facts and questions. Absolutely marvellous. This is Minnie Me. She is the other bunny. I do get people saying to, um, coming through, good morning, Mr. Bunny, are you a real bunny rabbit? The answer is they are real bunny rabbits, but you are talking to the AI machine learning. Uh, this is Mini Ding. The toolbox has absolutely everything you could possibly need. No bunnies were hurt in the making of these imageries. These are AI images. They are not tagged as AI images because I reckon people should be able to work out that isn't really Mini Ding. That's me done. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ian. We were having a, a, a discussion in the chat about the bunnies. So thank you for clarifying at the end there. Um, that was brilliant. I feel like you've you've given us a whirlwind of things to talk about that's been really good. Shall we see if anyone's got any questions, Ian? Is that a yeah? A good and and, and if any and if anyone doesn't, I can then show you AI and what it does, so you'll be able to see it in context. Absolutely. So we've got until we've got kind of fifteen minutes or so. So if people want to ask questions, you can either raise your hand and unmute yourself, um, or you can add them into the chat. And if not, then we can, like Ian said, he can give you a bit of a demo of how AI works in action. 
So we'll just leave a little tumbleweed moment of silence for any questions to come through. <laughs> so, Angela, if similar charities are using AI to write bids, would that increase likelihood of unsu unsuccessful bids over time? I, no, <clears throat> but I can say there are the ethical questions around this. I, I chaired a grant making board for, for a decade. Uh, what would we award grants on? And we award grants on things like the need, how good you were, the quality of, 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 of the service you delivered. That's what a grant should be based on. The bid writing doesn't do that at all. That all comes from you. So th th there's not a problem that way. Um, where I think you may lose out is where you get things like professional bid writers using it and churning things out really, really, really quickly. And the people who are not using it struggle even more. Currently, you've got a very uneven playing field. So the bit, the professional bid writer at the top, very good written English, know exactly what the grant makers want, probably connected to the grant maker and talking to them. You, you're stuffed compared to these guys. And what we see the bid writer is doing is leveling that playing field because it enables you to capture the data for a good bid and it then turns it into reasonable quality pros. So it's leveling the playing field, but it will never, ever be as good as a good bid writer. It hasn't got the flair and the insight, stuff like that. Brilliant, thank you. Joey's asked, within the resources available on, on your website, do you have an AI terms of use char charities could adapt and adopt? Depends what you mean by that. Um, the AI ethics framework will cover everything. And you just go through it and take what you want. If you mean things like your privacy policy and T and C's, uh, there is a separate explanation within it. The problem you've got is they're scraping your website. There's not a lot you can do about it. You can include things like no AI in the HTML. It's not legal. It's not even an industry standard. You can just hope that the bots will not scrape you. There's not a lot. The only thing you can realistically do about that kind of stuff is to write into your TNCs and your privacy policy that it may not be scraped and used within an AI LLM without your prior written permission. That will not stop them doing it, but it does mean if they do do it, it's a breach of contract. And I say to people, I'm happy with my website. I just want my website to get out to the charities to get them the information. So if, if chat GPT nicks it and gives it to NCBO, I'm not actually bothered. Um, but if you've got things and you need them to be protected, then it does matter. And where I worry is pictures about things like women and children, where people may scrape those pictures and then use them for pornography or for other reasons um, elsewhere. That I, I think I think is a risk. <clears throat> so I would just be careful. The way I approach it is I look at my website and say, is there anything on my website I don't want scraped? And so, for example, I've got a picture of a young woman. Um, I, I, I've got to be careful what I say, but it was submitted uh, and, and she was a vulnerable young woman. Uh, and when I put up the data behind it, actually more or less said that. So the alt text, etc. I went and I went and changed it. So it, now it's just a picture of a woman. It doesn't say anything like that. Um, and so I would just be careful about what you put on your website and what you put behind it. And they will come and take pictures and they will abuse them. But that that's how it is. I think that's really interesting, Ian, especially when we've got people who are in marketing and comms positions on the call, thinking about or responsibility for that on the board, thinking about the power of case studies and the language that we use, but also then the consequences of that from this perspective. I think that's a really helpful um, thing to be aware of. We've got some other questions. Yeah, coming consideration. Through. Yeah, I get that. But when I went and researched it, the advice from the lawyers who were writing it online is it was breach of contract. Mm -hmm. um, now, the definition of a contract is a consideration, um, but but they said you could still make the breach of contract argument. And that's just an answer to, just for the recording, if people are watching it back and not got the chat, Jeff's asked yeah. a question around breach of contract. So in the UK, any contract requires a consideration. I can't see such so a consideration. Effectively, you get something, you pay me. It's a two-way process. If they scrape your website images, 
it's a one way process. It doesn't meet the definition of a contract. Um, but but the, the lawyers who wrote the advice I found said it was a breach of contract and it had been tested. It is quite complex because if you're there's fair use and all sorts of stuff wrapped into it, it's, it's not by any stretch of the imagination clear. The thing about imagery is you really need to start thinking about this. So, for example, when I was chief exec, of, we were dealing with vulnerable women, drugs, that kind of stuff. Um, how we portrayed them and getting imagery was really difficult. Um, but what people are now doing is they're now using AI. So it's not a real person. You do have to be very careful. Amnesty got shouted at because they used a picture of a woman being manhandled by the police. It was AI generated and people got a bit stroppy about that. But it has a lot of uses so you can portray vulnerable people. Here's the thought. I saw someone, I've forgotten his name, so I can't give him credit. And he was using Mid Journey and they were using cartoons of vulnerable people. Not, not Mickey Mouse stuff but realistic cartoon. So actually it created a powerful image, but you could see it wasn't a real person. But what you had to do, and he found, is it had to be absolutely properly done. So he did one with a wheelchair with someone, like support equipment, and he got the equipment wrong and he really offended them. So he said, it's okay to do it, but you have to be sure that you do it really. The other one was, um, was a Maasai guy, but he was wearing West African dress, which doesn't work if you live in Kenya. And 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 you've got, and AI will do that. And what he was saying is you actually have to be true to the picture. It must be very, very accurate. And you must also think, would my beneficiaries wish to be represented like that? So I think it's going to change the way we do marketing. It's going to throw up new and exciting ways to do it. But we're going to have to think about how we do it so that we protect our beneficiaries and, and, and that they, they don't feel patronised or insulted. Absolutely. Um, we've got another question. Ryan's asked, can we be confident using your policy? Can we be sorry? Can we be confident that using your policy templates will be right for our charity? There isn't a lot on AI. Um, and my policies, I write everything into them. And what you do is you prune it. I can't write a policy that covers every charity in every single circumstance. It's just not possible. So mine tend to be horrendously long and stuff and you prune them out. But what I do with all of the policies is they're all cro cross referred to the source policy documents. So if it's in there and it says I did one yesterday um, on acceptance and refusal and ex gratia and things falls outside it, I've got a link to the ex gratia policy. You can check them all back to the source to be sure. So, for example, they're primarily written for Charity Commission England and Wales. Now, uh, acceptance, refusal, donations in Scotland is probably not much different, but OSCR may phrase it in a slightly different way. So I can I can't do everything, but. Um, yeah, I think my acceptance and approved guidance was out before the commissions, and I think it's better because it does things that they didn't. So, yeah. Um, online images and video to prevent it. They're trying to do this now. They've come up with something called Nightshade, if you're an artist. And what happens is if someone copies your art and then feeds it into AI, it turns it into something stupid. So if, if you've got a painting of a dog and you feed it into AI, the nightshade will turn into a painting of a cat with five legs. So in actual fact, you, you, you could take it, but it, but it scrambles it. Um, I'm not sure there's any way. And the problem is there is now so much video online that, that you can get it. The risks at the moment are generally to famous people, Taylor Swift and the pornography they pushed out, at the Pope and the Puffer Jacket. They need a certain amount of video, they need a certain amount of audio and visual to be able to do it. But it is getting better and better and better and it will soon start happening to us. Uh, in the US already, uh, TikTok video, you're dancing with your mum. Uh, uh, so I pick up your voice, I feed it into the AI, I reverse image your mum, I find out who she is, where she is, I get her telephone number. The AI then phones your mum up, says I'm in terrible trouble, I need you to send money immediately. That's happened already in America. And that's why I think for us, um, 
protecting our beneficiaries and at least making them aware of that is like really really important um Ian, can I just jump back to Jeff's question? It's got it's moved up because of the chat, but Jeff asked whether AI could critique a draft bid. So yes. there's an implicit question: Can I feed stuff into the AI as part of a query? Oh yeah, yeah. And you can say to it, "I want you to write this bid better," or "I want you to." And and when we do have our prompt, what we say is compelling and emotionally engaging, because what you need to do in a funding bid, you've got to make the case. This is urgent. This is a great project. It's going to work. And you need to write the business case. Nobody ever gave money to a business case. It's got to be emotionally engaging as well. So what we say to the chat GPT, those are the two things I want when you write it. You can say to it, reduce the word count from my 350 to under 300 or rewrite this. But I want you to bring this more to the fore or I want you to put more detail in this section or I want, and, and you can tell what I tend to do when I work with AI is getting it absolutely right at the outset is quite difficult. So we're doing one for infrastructure organizations and it gave me all the funders for buildings. Welcome to AI. So what I try and do is I'll tend to ask quite a simple question, make sure I've got it right. Is it the primary school kids in the madrasa is it young women undergraduates in the UK? I make sure that I get that right. And then I build it out. Could you turn that into a step-by-step -step guide? Could you add a section on risk? Could you add a bit more of this? Could you add an annex that covers that? And I will build it bit by bit by bit. And for me, I, I find that works better than, than, than trying to bite, eat the, the elephant in one go kind of thing. And fund has accepted lack of capacity um, no, I know that quite a few fundraisers are using it for bid writing or to review their own bid writing. I haven't really seen uh, funders using it. I mean, some of them are still back in the 1970s. Uh, it, it will come, but but I, I haven't seen anyone using it yet that I know of. Um, conversations on AI is um, I have the AI roadkill toolkit and it basically gets you all the questions to ask. So, for example, if you're feeding pussy cats, AI is not going to feed the pussy cats for you. But if you're delivering a helpline for the pussy cats, suddenly you're into different. So, what what the, the roadkill thing does is it gives you all the questions to ask. It then gives you um, how to think about culture within charities and how you need to change them because it's going to be a change of culture. All the AI will drop on us, and everyone will get really excited about it but you need to begin using it. So it's like giving a laptop to someone who's never had one. It takes you a while and the charities are going to change their processes. The procedures will get different. Job roles will change, how you structure things, and they will all change. And we will not get the full productivity benefits until we're there. And that's going to take a lot longer than switching the stuff on. So. Uh, go to the Roadkill Toolkit. It's It's got all of those questions. It's got step-by-step -step suggestions about the kind of things you could do. It talks about how to change culture and begin thinking about this. There are a few <clears throat> little immediates I would certainly do. The Ethics Toolkit will give you those. You might want to think about updating things like the data protection policy. And certainly, if people are using it, they pro probably they may not know that what they're putting into chat GPT is being shared with the entire planet. So if they're uh, writing beneficiary reports, disciplinaries, appraisals, <clears throat> oh, I know what I'll do. I'll take this month's payroll with all of our bank details and I'll get chat GPT to rejig it. Excellent idea. Um, they may not know. So certainly those kind of things. So I would go to the ethics framework. I would just read through it. It, it's not trying to tell you to do anything. It's like a whole checklist and you go through and go, nope, 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 nope. Actually, yes, I do need to think about that. Fine, I'll have that one. The Roadkill Toolkit will help you have a start a conversation. I think that's, um, thank you, Ian. That's a really lovely kind of clear action for us to take away, especially if the majority of us are trustees. I know that sometimes at our sessions, we get a mix of 
charity managers and trustees so um definitely like a very tangible action now that we feel excited about the possibilities of ai but also aware of the risks of it as well so i hope that people on the call feel that they've got kind of tangible resources and support that they can have to kind of carry on thinking about okay. ai right um, last five minutes i will show you what ai looks like and does so this when you talk to the bunny rabbits, this is what you're talking to. So do not ever lose sight of what this stuff is. This is machine learning. And what they have is the world's biggest Q&A. They've burrowed into the Charity Commission, the Gambling Commission, everything. And when you ask them a question, they go into their knowledge banks and they're looking for the answers. And then they give you preset answers and prompts. And if they can, if they're not sure, they come and tell me. If they can't answer, they come and tell me. So the machine learning gives you the right answer. Might not be the answer you wanted, but the answer is right, because it will take you to the Charity Commission and say, this is the guidance on how you do that. So for a charity registration certificate, this is what it is. But this is, a, so it's giving you the right answer. This is ChatGPT. You can see it has got damn all in it because you talk to it. So this is a prompt. Can you see how detailed it is? So the little charities, unregistered charities, unincorporated associations, um, they struggle to find funders because they, they keep bumping up against registered. Look how precise that prompt is. Very, very precise. And it's taken practice to get down to that. And then I hit it. Off you go, and off goes ChatGPT. And it's doing what I've told it to. We are currently arguing with ChatGPT to persuade it that it wants to um, run all sorts of grant funding tools for small charities. Uh, and this is part of what we're doing. This is just practicing it. And so it says, is that helpful, blah, blah, blah. And I can go give me more and off it goes and that's what chat gpt looks like but what you think you're asking and what it thinks you're asking are often not the same so you just have to practice it and and just get your hands dirty i have a whole chat gpt library for things like governance and PR releases and all sorts of stuff. And Brilliant. so just go and help yourself. That sounds great. We've had lots of people thanking you for such a insightful and kind of um, eye-opening session. So thank you, Ian. Um, I've just shared in the chat as well a couple of links to future sessions. So if we're always trying to make sure that what we're doing is relevant to trustees and making sure that these kind of topics where you might not feel as confident are, are kind of giving you some um, more information to go and have those conversations so it'd be great to see you at um, future getting on board sessions and please make sure that you will send the link out for um, charity excellence but there's clearly a wealth of um, really helpful resources on there as well so please I don't think you're alone in this and I hope that Ian's enthusiasm has uh, given you some oomph to go and um, have those conversations about AI so I think with that we'll let you go and enjoy the rest of your afternoons but um, once again thank you very much to Ian for such a brilliant session and then um, we hope to see you again at a future trustee learning program session. Thank you. Yeah, I'm um, sorry. Someone asked if you drop me an email, I'm happy to send you the prompt. If you go to the website, don't mention the vets. Many Ding has had a traumatic week. If you mention the vets to either of the bunnies on the website, they will get very hissy about it. If they do get upset, change the subject to carrots. They will be all over you. It will be fine. Trust Lovely. Me. Thank you so much. Okie doke. Thank you very much indeed. Cheers. Bye.